the legends of memory and storage. <laughs> Crucial brings you the ultimate performance in gaming. Legendary products. Precision engineered. For speed and stability. Crucial Ballistics. Hi guys, this is Zaya and welcome to Streamer Reviews, where gaming streamers review the best new gaming laptops. Gamers are an impatient bunch and I've got a laptop just for you. Let's look at the top 3 reasons why the Acer Predator Helios 300 is perfect for the impatient gamer. Number 1. It's 11th Gen Intel Core i7 processor which brings out the potential of the GPU's high-speed GDDR6 memory to ensure faster experience with higher frame rates and lower latency. Gamers hate long load times. That's why our second reason is the Helios 300's 2TB PCIe SSD. The SSD operates at PCIe Gen 4 speeds, giving you incredible read-write speeds for a faster response time. If all this wasn't enough, check out reason number 3. The 5th Gen Aeroblade 3D technology plus Vortex Flow, which lets you say goodbye to heating issues. Shout out to the PredraSense dashboard, which lets you monitor your system, overclock, and customize everything instantly from one place. 
I think it's clear that this system is geared for super fast results. Get your Acer Helios 300 powered by 11 Gen Intel Core processor now. The legends of memory and storage. <laughs> Crucial brings you the ultimate performance in gaming. Legendary products. Precision engineered. For speed and stability. Crucial Ballistics. Hey guys, I'm Ankita. Welcome to Streaming Reviews, the place where you can watch gamers review the best new gaming laptops in the market. Gamers love exploring the vivid detailing of their favorite games. This demands a system that can support their immersive experience. So, we'll be checking out the Intel Powered Nano Collision 5, a laptop with features that let you dive into the exciting world of gaming. One of the most important aspects of the Lenovo Legion 5 is its 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor with a base clock speed of 2.3 GHz up to 4.6 GHz turbo. It flaunts 8 cores, 16 threads, and 24 MB cache. The Legion 5 lets you untether your gaming experience with Intel Wi-Fi 6, ensuring you can enjoy your favorite games wherever you like. Play on the go with up to 75% less latency. The Lenovo Legion AI engine optimizes performance automatically to any of the top 16 AAA games you're playing. With auto detection dynamically allocating CPU and GPU usage accordingly to get up to 15% more FPS. Speaking of sensors, there's another sense that's also important for an immersive experience. Sound. Thankfully, the Legion 5 has this covered as well. A pair of stereo speakers enabled with dynamic audio gives you an immersive 3D audio experience. Why wait? Get your own Lenovo Legion 5 and dive into the world of gaming today.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LG Ultra Presents Eastward of the Gauntlet Season 4, powered by Crucial, with our gaming partners be Intel. You have to remember that Intel delivers the best gaming value by delivering the best overall gaming experience. Follow the hashtag Game with Intel to find out more. And our apparel partners are none other than 656. It's going to be your boy Aggressive back in the hot seat once again with my main man universe. A little bit of a bad hair day coming on from my part, but nothing I could do about it. I tried whatever I could to try to bring it back to what it normally is, but... I guess you gotta live with it. Just like we have to try and see exactly how this matchup is gonna go because Exili, yeah, they've been having a pretty rough time. Especially with how their players have not been available for a lot of their different matches. But Orgos 5, yeah, I would say that they've been making strides, but at the same time, they've been falling down a couple of steps as well. Yeah, I think both these teams are at, you know, kind of a crossroad that I would expect uh, in a way that it you know, something that they wouldn't really be accustomed to, unfortunately, because of, you know, uh, circumstances that are not in their hands to control at multiple times. I think that Oculus 5 right now do have the upper hand. All the five players from their team are pretty great. Uh, but hey, let's look at the five players who are on the, forgive me, the four players who are on the MVP standings. And of course, there's going to be no changes except for the one it is towards the end. Shooter has made his way here from Team Snakes. And the Knight Rider has moved up another position. We've got Paradox in number two with the highest kill so far. And Rofuel sitting pretty with the first position in his grasp. Nobody from these players are going to be performing today. Nobody from these teams either. It's all about Exili and the side of Hogless 5 today. And one of whom is pretty, you know, much, uh, a little bit, I would say, more stable than the other. Let's go to the bracket, though, and have a look at uh, the overarching storyline. There is just a one chance for either of these teams. Exili had already given up their spot in the upper bracket to Enigma uh, by forfeiting that match, unfortunately. But here they are, trying to fight for their lives, at least in the end moments of this competition, and uh, looking to override the experience of Oculus 5. Yeah, Exili, they've been having a pretty rough time, just as I said it. But again, let's head on down over to the team intros and see exactly who's going to be playing from their side. Exili, they're going to be the first one to come on down through Sami, Juice Reek, Solo, uh, Fancy Nine, and of course, now SMX. Fancy, I believe, is not going to be playing today in his place. We are expecting Spacewears to, uh, Space to play, who is the owner of the team, if I recall properly. That is his account. So, yeah, they don't really have the original playing five playing today, so things could just get a little bit iffy. It is concerning, that is for sure. But hey, don't forget, on the other side as well, we've got, uh, you know, uh, of August 5, we've got somebody from the management playing as well. It is Hacker, who was the, um, you know, uh, manager, and he was also somebody that we did not expect to perform as good as we could. But then he did do a pretty good job of holding down the team for himself. Let's have a look at the player spotlight though for the side of Exili, uh, which I would believe yeah, it's going to be Zolo. It is going to be the controller. He's got a very nutty aim along with his uh, utility usage. He's pretty damn good with the way he you know conducts himself on the battlefield. But today it's going to be a lot more difficult for him, I believe, especially given that the one thing that they have playing against them is that their original five are not playing today Agi. and i think that's gonna affect them quite a bit that's gonna be a little bit of a detrimental situation in general for them but then again i do believe that even if you don't have the original five you see have, have that game sense you still have that coordination to just inch your way right through but before we talk about exactly a little bit more let's talk about the sad focus five as we head on down over onto their team intro see exactly what they're going to be kicking up for us all these players they're clean they're fly we already know what they're capable of but again it's a team that has a couple of problems they like to roast each other they like to have fun they're a little bit of a rambunctious group but sometimes chaos is something that is necessary to win out on a game of valorant and these guys have made chaos their center stage and their primary strategy pretty much if they're a calm and collected team you know something is wrong yeah that is for sure i think that this is uh, five individually brilliant players who have found themselves in a good position especially the last time when they surprised us with blackhawk playing on the uh, jet roll which i was really taken aback by but he did do a pretty good job uh, on the map of ascent i believe that was he had a pretty good game but following that august 5 did end up losing so here they are to try and redeem themselves and hold on to 
uh, the uh, TC contract season four and maybe do something here. Let's go to the player spotlight and see, which I should believe Blackhawk. Nope, it's going to be a CJ who I do not believe is going to be playing today. I think uh, that it is going to be the usual five that we see. But uh, hey, if we are giving the jet roll to somebody, then we might as well see Sai or Blackhawk in that, especially uh, recently given his uh, endeavors on the jet seems to be working for him. Although the operator does not really sing the songs of death for him as usually as it should, I think that uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup between two teams who are going to have a little bit of a struggle sometime right behind them. But I think that Oglas 5 are somehow a little bit better performing at the moment. Let's go to the map video and let's have a look at where exactly we're going to be seeing all of this come down. And of course, it's going to be Ascent picked up by Oglas 5. I would not expect anything else. Ascent, Haven, Bind, I would say the, the base of Valorant, these three maps. Ascent is one of those maps that I still don't personally enjoy being the first initial map pickup. It is a map that tests the skills of your team when it comes down to your raw mechanical skill instead of pure strategy. Normally, you just play one simple strat, and that simple strat just gives you anything and everything. Before, though, with Astra, I would say that this map is a lot more strategic heavy because with Astra, you have multiple different lineups that you can pull off because of the gravity well, because of the stuns, and now that Astra is no longer in the meta pretty much, you're stuck with an omen. And yeah, with an omen, what do you do? Flash and dash combo outside of A main, flash and dash combo outside of B main, maybe throw a paranoia onto mid tiles and then flash and dash there? Anything else that I missed? Well, I kind of, you know, have everything covered by you, what you just said. I think that Ascent as you know as much as you can you know maneuver around the different tactics that you can play on ascent it's it, it's just what it is right and that is a straightforward map it's got a b it's got an a it's got a mid which kind of does not work around too many different aspects as you would see maybe on fracture maybe on bind i think that it's you know stability lies in its mediocrity ascent and that's exactly why it is the you know called the ground zero map of valorant but hey if we are going to be looking at one place where oglas 5 would feel comfortable and have felt comfortable all this while it has been ascent and i think starting off with ascent you should not have a problem the agent selection is going to be coming up in just about a couple of more seconds ladies and gentlemen as we have every player on the server locked and loaded and we are going to be running in pretty soon but I do have to ask you guys if the age old question, do you think Exili, having not played in such a long time and having so many, you know, issues with their lineup and individually they're having a couple of players not having to be available, do you think they're going to be able to do it today? I do believe they should be able to take at least one map away or even make it a little bit closer. But what was why they mean business. You know for a fact that they're going to start bomb rushing their way into a site and they're going to take down their opposition just through their pure mechanical skill. Now, though, I really am expecting Blackhawk to go back to his controller role, but then again, with what happened on the other day, yeah, I think that Blackhawk, he is feeling himself a little bit on the deal list, so Blackhawk on the jet could happen again, and maybe we just could be looking at him fragging out of his mind. Well, there is... A map that I would be excited to see, and that is Bind, because Bind is something that I think would test both of these teams a little bit more than um, Ascent, that's for sure. But if or not we're going to see it is a question. And I think that this map pool kind of falls a little bit more into uh, the favor of Oglas 5. I think they're very comfortable with Haven as well, especially with, you know, um, they having been choosing Haven a couple of uh, BO3s in the past. I think they had chosen it in the last map of last match of their uh, of their uh, group stage. And with that, I think we need to just wait and watch. This is going to be their final outing. One of these teams are going to be giving up their position here in the TEC Gauntlet Season 4 for the final time, ladies and gentlemen. We go into agent selection and Oglas 5 versus XCV. Here we got for you. We're gonna get picked up an instant. Like you could already see August five. They were ready before they even got into the server, hovering over the agents that they want. 
we are going to be witnessing the age-old composition that they've always picked up and the double initiator coming into play double initiator being the ko and the silver instead of the sky and the silver because ko just adds such a massive dynamic shift over onto this map allowing you to rush aside a lot more quick and without much of a problem because think about it like this uh universe the way that Sai plays, he can easily set up his team, and the, through the usage of one null command, he just completely nullifies any form of an advantage that Killjoy could have on the other end. Hackers, uh, sorry, Space Wiz is going to have a really hard time trying to stop a lot of these rushes on the defensive side. Because through that usage of that one null command, it will completely shift the dynamic of the team. Yep. I think that KO is uh, slowly becoming, like, uh, you know, one of those agents that you just cannot afford to leave out, especially when it's a little bit of a close back map like uh, Ascent or Split. And there is a dynamic difference here. We do have uh, a Sky and KO difference. Everything else remains the same. There's a Killjoy on both ends. There's a jet on both ends, there's a Sova as well as an Omen on both ends. It's only the secondary initiator that's been given a bit of a rest in terms of usage. And I, with that, I, it's going to make the split between the two teams. I think that's going to be making or breaking the game for either one of these teams. Is the Sky going to be more potent here? I'm not quite sure because the KO has been used extensively on Ascent. Sky, not so much as I would hope to have seen. But hey, if uh, Doomsday is confident with it, why not? We need to see if we can get away with something here, but hey, Sky, it works out. But then again, this is the old meta. The old meta doesn't really have a lot of a strong foothold on this map just yet. It's a problem. But can they remedy that problem? Yes. It really does depend on how they want to set themselves up on the map, how they really want to go in for a lot of these pushes, because the sky allows you to be dynamic, but everyone knows the strategy to go up against the sky. Everyone knows how to play around her. That's why she has fallen out of the meta so heavily, and people are starting to pick up things like KO, because KO not only allows you to go in for the usual things that the sky could have done, but it also gives you that opportunity to completely shut down your opposition and stop them from slowing you down whenever you want to go in for a rush. Sky, on the other hand, does not do that. It allows you to gain the information. You slow them down for a split second and that's it. You don't get anything else out of it. Unless you're able to utilize your utility to get a kill, you're not going to get any value. Well, that is true. I think Sky is... A very you know dynamic agent when it comes to not just setting up your team but also setting up yourself but i think when you do look at it in a different way the sky is sometimes not as potent as the ko because if you have a ko in the opposition you can immediately shut a sky down and she's rendered useless because her key usage is her utility and without her utility the sky is well almost close to useless unless you've got good aim at least with other agents you can whip something up but with sky you cannot make solo plays you cannot go out on your own without your utility that kind of makes her somewhat in some terms a liability but in other terms it makes her very useful when you use it in combination with a jet or a race or whatever it is. Here we go. The match has started, ladies and gentlemen, and we have the side of Oculus 5 moving in from the attack towards a shot. An immediate three-man rush, and I don't know why Blackhawk was left to fight that alone, but he has. Doomsday's got another trade over here towards a main. God, Bexy will get back too. As SMX comes out of the smoke towards a shot, it's a one we won right now on the A side, and Sai wins that fight. He much needed to. And now Space Ways left in a 2v1. We'll have to let that door close. He's not going to be able to fight it. The plant will go down. And he is left in a 1v2 in the very first run. And not really the situation where he really wants to be in. Not against these two players. They have the angles. They have the whole... They have the perfect positions as well. And they're waiting for him to jump down. That's going to be a double peek. And there's nothing that you can do to try to survive that one. 
Sai and got Vexy. Pretty much gave space was the fright of his life. And on this 0 and 1 scoreline, it's gonna get a little bit more tough for them to try and come on back from. Because if this is what the first taste of the first round is like, I believe this could be a very close and competitive set. In all of this fight, they cannot underestimate the roster of Exili anytime soon. Yeah, I think that even though they've got, you know, the you know, the back lines going on, the back the issues that's happening, I think they're still gonna be uh, competing in a much better way. Base Wiz immediately retreats back, expecting that push to come in. Blackhawk dashes in. Needs to be wary of what's happening on the back of sight there. Yeah, checks it, gets the kill. Unfortunately for SMX, his classic is not gonna work wonders as he would have expected it to. Five versus two, there's no way they're probably gonna win this. Doomsday and Sami both towards a shot. And Doomsday walks out. Now they have a position of one player at least who they can maybe get the kill off. Nope, it seems not. Sami on the back end, he's just gonna try and walk on away. Maybe save that classic for a rainy day, but nope. Yeah, he's gonna get farmed into an ultimate point instead. Blackhawk gets one more kill for himself. It's a little bit closer to result, but then again, no real advantages being found. They're just gonna be able to carry over the guns that they had in the previous round, moving on down forward, play for a full-on bonus, and try and build up that economy even further. Because currently, now is the first buy round for the side of the Xili. This is where they really need to make their stand, because we know for a fact that Olga's 5 as a team, as soon as they gain the momentum, there is absolutely nothing in this world that can stop them unless you take a pause and try to break that. Well, let's find out if they're going to be able to do something in this buy round here. We do have another B pressure coming in from both mid and B, and Sammy's already taking out Black off, so that's one good thing done. Sammy looking for more dashes away at the right time was in imminent danger space ways at the same time gets one towards b main trades off another and sammy has no idea that wimp is just hiding towards the upper end of mid space ways with a third and with that it's wimp in a 1v3 situation he does have a superior weapon to work with he needs that kill gets it now it's a 1v1 this is the clutch master you know, if anyone can win this, it has to be Wim. Timing? Huh? Wim, he's gonna be able to get the spike. This is a free one for him. But yeah, the plan? I have the That's spike. a even bigger question. I mean, I'm he knows sure his he... position. He's gonna run. He's gonna give up noise, but... Oh, man. What? Tuesday. He wasn't expecting it. He wasn't ready for it. I have no clue how he did not hit that. I think he was just not ready for it. He was on mint. No, he, he heard him. He heard him walking through. He heard him jumping off the ledge of the market stairs. Should have expected it either towards the, you know, the first lane or towards both. Bo both. Both of them are pretty much the same angle. And he did jump upon both to try and close the market door, but hey. Looks like Wimp is just already feeling it today, just like the last game he did. He was playing pretty well, Space Ways. Suppressed, blinded, and sent back, and Wimp gets another free kill towards mid. It's okay, then. Yeah, these are just free kills at this point. Not much that you can do. Maybe try and survive a little bit while longer, SMX. Maybe he has a little bit of his own calling. With that share, he's gonna be able to deal some damage. Now Sai, he's on very low levels of HP and space space. Should be able to find this kill on towards the face of Sai. Spotted out the gun barrel. He does not know. Sai swings out, gets the final, and Wim's gonna be able to take out the lurker being Zolo. Zero and four. And first four rounds just go on out in the flash. Well, this is um quite a bit of a start. For Oglas 5 and quite a disappointing start for Exili. Would have expected them to at least put up one round as soon as that buy round came in, but thanks to Wimp's heroics and his sneaky little maneuvers towards mid, he was able to clutch out a 1v3, which puts his team in a comfortable situation of 4 and 0. And here we go. There comes the ultimate from side. They're gonna take care of the A side all by themselves. 
Doomsday cannot do anything except for being pushed back. No utility being thrown out either. There's no way he's going to be able to fight this. The plant goes down within just the first 20 seconds of the round. And we already have a 5v4, which Exili are on the back end of. Missions are good, but Doomsday is just going to be maybe a little bit better. Not going to happen anytime soon, though, here. He gets swung out, and Sai's going to be the one to find that kill. A couple of more players to go for. Sai's going to be able to shit down space with an SMX. He's a good player, but against so many bodies, there's no way even he can survive that one. Zero and five. And this is why KO is such a good character. As soon as you throw out that null command, you know for a fact that the entirety of the site will be yours no matter what happens. If your trade game is on point, if your communication is that good, you're gonna find those kills and you're gonna make them pay with their lives. You know, it's 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 like a mobile killjoy ultimate, but at the same time. It's also not because you can actually fight against them, right? The only thing is you don't have utility. And if you have the confidence on your aim to at least take out one or maybe two players, which could be the KO himself if you're lucky, you can fight against it. But because people are so scared that they cannot face off their opponents without utility. Oh, oh, oh Black Hawk. Black Hawk, okay. Well, talk about utility. He could have dashed away from that situation, but he chooses not to. There's Sami with one, Sami with two, Sami looking for more, here comes God Vexy to trade off what SMX did. His damage being done, and his damage being dealt. Finally a round comes up for the side of Exili, and I don't know how, but it was chaotically taken, and I think that they're just happy that they got the round instead of how they got the round. Yeah, I think that the whiff instigated pretty much the entire downfall for the team, that's fine. Sometimes you gotta whiff to hit your shots. That's what I always tell myself. Oh. This is gonna be an interesting round. Sami has his operator, spots one, kills one. There's no thinking about that. Oh, Zolo almost lost his life. Down of 58 HP, he's gone. Teleports twice to get away from any side of a crossing fire. SMX will get Wimp. There goes the blinding, but it doesn't matter because SMX is going to get that kill onto Wimp clean. Could not even teleport away. He was scared that somebody's going to be around the corner. And now, Hacker out with the spike in the open. It's going to split Oglas 5 into two halves. But even when I say that, Blackhawk just delivers the deafening blow that he can. But immediately traded off trying to retrieve the spike. There it is. SMX with a three. And that is going to be Exili with their second round. Slowly but surely making their strides towards making the score level. Or at least trying to maybe get even a lead if possible. They're fighting back, and that's one of the main things that you have to highlight. They're not giving up on any of their engagements. They're playing together as a squad. They're constantly communicating with one another, and that's one of the main reasons why they're able to find so much value. And this is the type of value that you really just need to build up on. Small things. For example, Sami with the Operator getting that first pick onto mid, and as soon as he got that first pick onto mid, that immediately told a couple of the players to play aggressive from B main, maybe just catch a player off guard who maybe turned around at that moment when the first kill happened, and he's gonna start walking up B main. And then you start walking up B main as well, and you try to cut them off when they don't have the proper timing. They're not gonna be expecting you to be that close. These small things are helping Exili get a lot of these rounds out of the bag. And with these first two rounds that they have gained, it's gonna start building up more and more. Slow and steady wins the race. Try and read a lot of the plays being done by Orgus 5 because they're being very predictable. And even these rushes, they can be stopped if you play it smartly enough. That shock that was perfect, but it doesn't matter. SMX still gains the kill. There comes the blind to try and stop it though. Blackhawk with the knives. While he gets one, he's got more to worry about and he gets it. The right click works perfectly. And here comes Zolo. And while Blackhawk is completely Deprived of his senses, Doomsday comes in, makes the best of that situation, and gets a kill onto him. Two versus three now. A very awkward round for Oculus 5. They did not rush in, unfortunately, because that one flash came in from Zolo Crazy. 
That was pretty much what stopped them from getting what they wanted. Now, Sammy could put an end to this and get round number three. All oh, the timing. Turns away at the wrong time. And Wimp has made an advancement. I'm pretty sure he does not expect this. And Wimp is going to be the menace that he always has been. That knife, although, does not detect anybody. What? Zolo? Zolo? You what need to looking? look at that. What is he looking at? Comms? Ah, uh, that's a problem there. But... Moving on down from there, there's one more player still alive. Doomsday, he has the opportunity to completely shut this one down. He has two flashes, gonna be popping out one. 30 seconds left on the clock. He's gonna try and take that swing, but Sai's not gonna miss that shot. Doomsday, he needs to swing a little bit faster there and use the bird a little bit higher to maybe find a shot off or maybe even get the proper flash down, but it really didn't help him right at the end of the day now, did it? Nope. Two and he, six. he could have even faked it. They would have believed it for sure. That could yeah. have given him a 1v1 straight up with Sai, but Wimp was right there. And I don't think that either way, even if he had gotten that one kill, to flick that quickly onto another head at that distance is kind of a difficult situation. But hey, still, the game is young and so is the night. Let's see if Exilia are able to transform themselves. Here goes Blackhawk yet again. That's a free kill that he could have just spammed towards. Now he's have to oh. he's had to go down, unfortunately because of that. The null command works for Sai, at least for him to get one kill. Yeah, Goes through happening. the smoke. Why? It just why are people just why? going through smokes and kissing each other at this one? Like what? Okay. Now it's on to God Vexy. God oh, Vexy! Yeah. And he has a drone as well to work with. He's gonna easily spot our Doomsday who's being a little toyed with with the sound cues. He still has an idea. So he's holding back. Oh, there it is. The spotting comes through. The recon is just a fake. Oh, God, it's so beautiful. Fine. And this is what I mean, dude. The recon mode is an actual pseudo flash. That's a replay and a half. You got to give it to him, Assassin. This replay needs to be on a highlight reel. Well, that was quite a play from God Vexy. Immediately throws in. He looks at the recon. Expects it to be stuck towards that right side wall. But nope. God Vexy gets the better of him. Immediately shuts him down. And that is round number 7 for Oculus 5. They've secured the half on the attacking side. And the defense is where they thrive better. Let's see if it works. Oh what? my god. Sammy deleted mid. He didn't even get a chance to fire the second blade. He was about to. Movement cancelled before it could even fathom into something. Blackhawk still looking for fights. And that grenade is going to blow SMX out of the water. And blow his head off as well, thanks to Size Vandal. And while the B side is up for grabs, there is one player. That is Space Wiz holding on to this. And there's definitely nothing he can do to stop this push. Yeah, Blackhawk, he's looking for a fight here. He's just gonna wait, he's just gonna try and see what he can find, and it's gonna be Zolo crazy going in for his own accord, trying to survive, trying to oh. find a couple of more. Blackhawk was, of course, gonna be the one that shuts him down. He... Last player remaining will be Doomsday, but there's nothing that you can do. He went into the smoke a little bit too early. Oh! <laughs> well, he said there's nothing he can do, and it looks like he's proving you wrong. The one thing he doesn't know is that Wimp is actually towards B main. And while that could have been a clip and a half for him, Doomsday came real close to causing a Doomsday. The one unfortunate thing that happened was when Zolo Crazy put down his smoke to try and dissipate the opponent into thinking that he can be anywhere. He moved into that smoke just one second before it actually, you know, came out to being its whole Ideal dome. List. Yeah, and... Of course, Blackhawk saw him in that split second and fired straight at him. And that gave the side of Oculus 5 their eighth round. They are looking really strong right now. They actually don't even care about the utility being thrown in by Exili. They are going to dominate. They are going to exert their dominance wherever they feel like it. And it's been working for the best so far. Another A split push here, and Sami, he gets the blade straight to his head. The blade, blade should deal 10 through. damage. The blade should deal 10 damage. I, I want a petition for this. 
he would have been dead by now. But Blackhawk cleans him up either way. There's nothing that Doomsday can do there. He should have retreated much faster. Last player standing, nine and two. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is a massacre. Believe. Nine and three, believe. Last round in the half. Ascend. I mean, nine and three. The cursed believers in the chat. Please stand. Who believes the curse? Let's see. I, I'm not quite sure at this point when you're getting beat this way that the curse is even going to affect. I don't see a curse coming anywhere close to this because uh, the side of Exili is struggling on a side that they should honestly be having to get at least 7 to 5. Not in their favor, even if it's not in their favor, at least a 7 to 5 half would have been good. But hey, oh, okay. Am I actually seeing Blackhawk with an Odin? Of course he has. Okay, there he gets punished for it. God, Vexy will trade him off immediately, though. Thanks to his Hunter's Fury. And while the B side is easily accessible, Hacker expecting the opponent's omen to be there. He's actually looking on the backside while Wimp was tra trans teleporting. Is this it? Transporting. Transfor uh, transportation. The new that ability of Omen. Jason, it reminds me of Jason Statham. God damn it, dude. Don't have to make that reference. Jason Statham is a cool guy, okay? But it looks like right now SMX and Zola are being the cooler guys. Getting three kills. 9-3. It's happening. 9-3. Maybe, unless God Vexy has something to say about it. Doesn't look like it. 9-3 it is. That's how it should be. And hey, the map of Ascend is already starting to heat up a little bit more than usual. But let's just see how it all plays out. The way that the team is playing, it's a quite difficult to put our fingers on exactly what could happen on the second half because now exactly they're on the attacking side. They can utilize the fast swings that they do have to the best of their own capabilities and just use that sky as much more of that aggressive initiator. Get them that level of information that they require to go in for the rushes. Be a lot more the moment in the way that they're trying to go in for these executes don't really slow down you're at the advantage when you're taking a swing so make sure you utilize that you know in all of this i unfortunately did not notice one thing that hacker has been having a bad game he's sitting on one kill so it's fine it's a kill joy you're allowed to be Spike on one down, Did God, okay, God Vexy just blew space with that water while he went towards the lane side. Wimp comes with Blackhawk on the backstab. And the double backstab works out for them, at least in getting a kill. A trade back. SMX playing around with his food. He gets him either way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where did the shock dart come from? Hello? I, I have no idea. It just, it, it still hit him. Somehow it hit him. Doomsday finds Hacker. There comes God Vexy yet again, causing damage. It's a two versus two, ladies and gentlemen. And it's all on to God Vexy because he's the one healthy right now. Whip will get Doomsday. But SMX is a little too quick to run up from the stairs and find himself the round for his team. 9 and 4. Slowly but surely. The believers of the curse can maybe pop their heads out of their hidey holes. But not too soon, I would say. Have a peek. Let's have a look at what's happening. Don't rejoice just yet. Oculus 5 are a team that is being very potent on the defense of Ascent. I've seen them pull out multiple thrifty rounds as well when need be. Sai looks for the Sheriff shot. It's not connect, but he does have information. Four players here, and you know that there's a fifth as well, possibly. Seely are immediately discouraged. Seely, the fact that they're showing this much respect as well to these equal weapons just goes to show that they understand they cannot try to brute force any of these minions. One second and they are dead. The aim game will always be on point and that's one of the many reasons why they're gonna try and opt to go in for a play like this. I like this play from Space Wiz though. He wants to try and make a little bit of noise down towards the B side to try and maybe sell a fake here. And this fake play could just work beautifully for him if he finds this skill on towards the face of Blackhawk. Missed the shot and I think he's dead. Wait, no. He's not dead. Well, not just yet. He gets away.
got Vex. He's holding down the perfect angle and now they're setting him up for defeat. But Sami, on the other end of the map, gets an excuse to run away into the A side. And now he's causing damage. Sai has no clue that he's in that smoke behind him. And while God Vexy has taken out Space Wish towards B. And a Marshall. Okay, God Vexy. Looking for more. Down to 48 HP. 11 make that. And that recon is going to be the death of him as... Uh, okay, SMX goes in for the knife. But Doomsday says, no, that's mine. How much that you can do here? Just take the L on that one. Maybe try and go in for a knife, but... You gotta remember, that last run was an eco round. So, no harm, no foul. This is where the buys will start coming in. This is where the main problems will start to arise for the side of Inksini. If they're able to win out on this... Uh, on this bonus round, then I personally do believe that they have a chance of going in for a full-on comeback and the scoreline's gonna go to a 99. But it already does depend on this bonus. Primarily because this bonus will not only cripple the economy of the side of the defenders, but also give the attackers enough bank to work with for the rest of the map. Holding on, waiting for that drone to clear out angles for him. Now he moves forward. They know the position of one. They know that probably Wimp is lingering around here as well. Sai comes in with his knife, gets information on four. And that grenade is going to be very, very potent. Zolo inches out by just about a small space of a cubicle to save himself but wimp has already found sami towards a main and that is the main man being disintegrated into nothingness oh come on wimp he's just being so troublesome right now 30 hp on this man he's gonna have support from sai as well even before they can touch wimp he says i got my brother covered and Space Wiz left all alone and gives away a flawless 10 and 5. Pretty much what we expected from the side of August 5. The minute their Byron comes in, these guys are just too difficult to handle. Now we do witness the 5 and 10 score line coming and down through. Moment of silence as well on that end because that buy round was just so crucial for them to win out on. Sorry, the bonus round for them was so crucial for them to win out on because it just would set the pace to be a lot more better for them. You know, obviously, Space was he did buy out on the last round, so he doesn't even have enough money to go in for a proper full buy. He's going in for a save while his teammates are still going in for buys. A little bit broken on the communication factor for the side of Xidi, but I believe they can make it better. Maybe not as well. Okay, Black Hawk. An awkward fight, but Sai is not gonna have one. He gets the kill. He even has told his teammates about mid being contested heavily. And while all of that drama is happening on your side of the map, Hacker's just waiting for somebody to walk in towards his turrets crosshair. It's gonna be in just about a second. Doomsday and him. How is his shoulder not being seen? I'm pretty sure Hacker's shoulder. Yeah, He's out in the open. No, it isn't. He. Oh, look at this man. This is a Mexican standoff right now. He gets it. Now Hacker knows what's up. He's just gonna hold on to the back of side, and now he's. You heard it. Oh, you heard it, right? Hacker. Yes, I'm pretty sure he heard it. He needs to be getting this kill. It's a free kill, and there it is. Thank God. That could have been a messy situation to be in. Wimp was aware of it as well, sitting in the perfect corner, and that's a number eleven. 11 and 11, ladies and gentlemen. 5 and 11. Starting to build up more and more and more as time passes. And it feels as though the 9 and 3 scoreline is not going to be on their favor. They did win out on the two rounds, but that bonus round was just so crucial for them to win. And now that they have lost out on that, look at their buys. They need to force buy into this round. There's no way they can get away with not force buying. Problems will just start building up. Simultaneous double. Kill. At this point, they're just relentless. They don't care what their opponents have. Oh, Blackhawk! 145, he's gone down to, but it doesn't even matter. 
Exilia are already down by three men, and the two remaining have just sheriffs to work with. I got the spike. And they are covered off by every single angle. Look at the map. The way that the defense is controlling it doesn't even seem like they are on the defense. They're on the attack right now. They are predators. And there's absolutely nothing Exili can do but run away. Be scared. And in the end, be hunted and killed. SMX with two. Okay. SMX showing his latent potential. But not for too long. His health is not going to support him as much as his weapon. And that's going to be match point, ladies and gentlemen. An match ascent point. seems like it's going to wind up sooner than we expected. Wrap it up and send it away because this seems to be one of those maps that Orgos 5 have been able to just completely dominate the other team on. Exactly, they do have buys to try and fight for the overtime, but then again, seven rounds? That's a little bit too much of a tall order for any team to try and finish. Well, this is the last try potentially every round is basically going to be their last try if they continue winning it but the one thing that's working in the favor is the five ultimates which one of whom is going to be used by space ways he's waiting for this to drop down and if it does go they're going to have an a side empty but wait they're actually moving away from here that flash oh they're moving back towards it they probably want to give away a little bit of a fake a double fake they were rethinking their entire strategy but here comes the flashes wimp is out of the open he gets one he gets two looking for the third he's got support as well and sai is just so happy collecting all of those assists sai is going to be able to pad his stats a little bit more here but at the same time all those five they know that they are royally in the win here they know. They don't have to worry about anything. Yep. Exili. On the other hand, though, yeah, Zolo. I think it's done for him. I mean, a one versus four situation with a Spectre. I don't think it's possible. If he had a Vandal, I would say yeah, for sure. A Vandal was lying right next to him, by the way. Ah. Uh, he, he just teleported without picking up. That's exactly what I was just gonna say. That he could have picked up the Vandal. And by the way, the what deadliest weapon in the game? Sorry, the second deadliest weapon in the game, the first one is Shorty. Second deadliest weapon in the game has finished it up. The side of Oglas 5. 13 to 5, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing that Oglas 5 didn't do right in this map. From the attack to the defense, everything was covered up by them in the best possible way. And what a win this is. They are moving further into Haven an advantage and that is very very crucial for them they needed this they are the team who had said earlier itself before the playoff started hacker had pointed out that a lot of people would say that they are underdogs and people would underestimate them but here they are to prove them wrong this is their first step towards it let's go to the match highlights while we continue talking about what ascent has been which is nothing more than a map that august 5 seemed to be a far too comfortable team to be playing against on yeah, that's why they just had the entire map in the palm of their hand. Because turning around a corner, immediately taking a swing, it was always Orgos 5 being the ones to take the engagements and be able to come on top of it. But then again, on the other side, Exili, they were putting up a good fight, but it just wasn't there. The communication factor wasn't really present. And the Sky really didn't get any form of value out of her own utility as well, now did she? No. Like, I, actually... I was getting endless amounts of utility, like... Good utility for procs. Every single one of his flash landed him a kill. He used the fragments to clear out corners where he were where he was able to find an engagement and just got a free freebie for himself. And his null command stopped how many rushes from Exili around five? Yeah, more or less. I think multiple times, even when they tried to go in for an aggressive play on their defense, uh, Exili had no choice but to move back because immediately Sai would either throw out his knife point or null command when, whenever it was available and he would just completely play, leave dude. the world of them. And this play got Vexy with the 1v3 that he did secure. And there were multiple clusters, man. Wimp's 1v3, got Vexy's 1v3. There were so many rounds where the individual prowess did come in. While there were, you know, sparks 
from X Series players, just like this one, Doomsday, almost clustered out of one v three himself. Unfortunately, was not aware of the fact that Wimp is a sneaky little guy who actually quite never really plays on the site when the spike is planted. Wimp is one of those few players that knows how to take a clutch situation by playing in the most unorthodox way possible. Beautifully yep. done. That's how it always goes. And Hey, map number one wasn't really the map that we really wanted to see from the side of Exili, but can they do better? Guaranteed. Because the second map will be their home map. The second map is where they will need to shine. So for now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be heading on down over onto a short break. But before you do head on down off over there, make sure to check out all of the links down below in the description. And when you're checking out Intel, make sure to remember that Intel delivers the best gaming value by delivering the best overall gaming experience. Follow the hashtag game with Intel to find out more about what they're up to. If you want to look clean, if you want to look fly, and if you have better hair than me, then of course get yourself an apparel, uh, get yourself a jersey from the side of 656. For now, we're going to be heading on down over into a short break and we'll be right back.
The legends of memory and storage. <laughs> Crucial brings you the ultimate performance in gaming. Legendary products. Precision engineered. For speed and stability. Crucial Ballistics. Hi guys, this is Zaya and welcome to Streamer Reviews, where gamers review the best new gaming laptops. We gamers are always on the lookout to get more out of our systems. If you're looking for a laptop that can exceed your expectations, check out the Dell G15 gaming laptop. Its 11 gen Intel Core i7 processor surpasses my expectations with a max turbo frequency of 4.6 GHz. It also has a game shift key on the keyboard which triggers a dynamic performance mode to maximize the fan speeds to keep your system cool while the processors push harder. The G15 also sports an Intel Thunderbolt 4 port which boosts your transfer speeds to unbelievable levels with its blazing fast bandwidth of up to 40 Gbps. It also lets you connect all your accessories using a single port. It's obvious that this system is designed to go above and beyond to deliver the results that you desire. Get your Dell G15 powered by 11 Gen Intel Core processor now.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LGL Twitter presents the Esports of Gauntlet Season 4, powered by Crucial, with our gaming partners being Intel. Intel delivers the best gaming value by delivering the best overall gaming experience. Follow the hashtag GameWithIntel to find out more, and our apparel partners are none other than 656. We are now jumping back straight into the matchup, no dilly-dallying down here at all, because at the Esports Club, you know, for a fact, sometimes we can be late, but then again, we try to give you as fast of a matchup and roundup as we possibly can, because... Yeah, or that's why they did pretty much exactly that. 13 and 5, it may look like a decent enough scoreline, but was it really decent? Oh, hell no. Yeah, while that has been, uh, you know, quite a bit of a discouraging map for the side of uh, Exili, I think that they can still make up for what's been lost so far. Ascent might have gone down the wrong way, but Haven can be a difference. We have seen them to be better on Haven, and that's exactly why they've chosen the map. And we will be going into the game in just about a 30-second uh, time period. But until then, I think that Exili Esports have had a little bit of an effect overall in terms of their confidence. I think you can see it. Even on their attack, they were being pushed back multiple times. And I hope that with the attacking stability that Haven provides and the variability, they should be having a better day. Let's go to the agent selection, ladies and gentlemen. Haven is their playground and they're the ones to start on attack. Let's see how it all plays out for them. It's going to be SMX yet again with that Sova as uh, Zolo is going to be locking in that Omen, which is something that I pretty much expected unless they wanted to go for, you know, Brimstone maybe, which on Haven actually... Um, you would not aggressive. I want to ask you this. Do you think the Brimstone is viable on Haven? So yeah, I don't. Yeah, because Optic Gaming just played with the Brimstone. I think yesterday was against Cloud9. I was watching that match as intently as possible. And they actually won that map. No, they didn't win because of the Brimstone. I really do believe that they won that game purely because of how FNS was playing and how they were controlling the map. Yeah, while, Brimstone while added the dynamic. True. Brimstone yeah. added a good dynamic, but you could see there were a lot of flaws in the way that they were trying to attack a site. It felt too static. The fact that Haven has three sites, you need global presence on the map. And unless you have something like an Omen or an Astro, you cannot have that global presence. The map is too big for a Brimstone. Yeah, it allows you to execute one site really well but it leaves the other sight lines open. And when you're playing Valorant at such a high competitive level, you cannot rely on one side executions because you saw that yesterday as well. I did a pure on full analysis by myself. Sadly, I don't stream. I should start streaming. I know, but I don't stream. I did a full breakdown analysis of the game and I saw the rounds that Optic did lose were on the ones that they just tried to bum rush into a site with the Brimstone and they just fell heavily under the presence of um, and then it came on to the overtime rounds where during the overtimes, the Brimstone had a lot more presence because he was playing from mid. And when yep. you are playing from mid, you just have all of the different sidelines at your disposal, but you become very predictable in the process. What if they start pushing you on mid? What are you going to do then? You're going to need to invest resources to try and get that Brimstone into a good position where he can play properly. That's yep. a problem. Brimstone is too one-dimensional of a character to like make things work, but we'll talk about more later because I'm going on a tangent because analysis, that's my part of my job. But currently though, the part of these teams' jobs is to try and stay alive because Exili, they're on their last legs. Well, they do have this double, oh, double duel is set up. Here's Sami trying to get one. He will get one, but immediately Blackhawk and Hacker respawn on other spots of the side. Oh, he gets it! Hacker, no! Supposed to get that kill. Oh One my god, the classic fight. is so good. This is fine. Yeah. What just happened? Stuff and things. Well, we do have yet again an Oglas 5 pistol round, which they will be happy with, at least for the first one. And they have a buy. And while Exili have got a little bit of a shift up in their entire lineup, they have Sami playing on the chamber, Space Wiz on the Reina, and Doomsday on the jet, which I 
kind of is a little off-putting for me because I would have expected Sami to perform the best he can on that jet troll. But hey, if Doomsday is feeling capable of doing it himself. No harm, no foul. Blackhawk being supported. Here goes out the drone. And Hakka moves out himself as a human drone. Sees one, sees another. And he's chasing Doomsday, knowing that he's all alone on that B side. Dashes away. A little too scary here. The, oh, the bullets. They move out of his... Oh, man. What? Hello? What? When? <laughs> Hello? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. I got the spike. Oh. Uh, You're joking, right? We didn't see it. What the? I, I, I have no clue what just happened. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's start from the beginning, right? Got Vexy, got two kills, all good, all, you know, going as according to plan. One person lost, not a problem. And there comes Wimp, trolling across. He finds a player with almost no bullets at a single point. And then there's... It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It happens to all of us. Wimp has gotten so many clutch situations. He has gotten so many inhuman reaction plays that... I think if we can give it to him, that it's fine. Just don't let it ruin your mental for the rest of the game. I don't think it will. I and mean, that's why he's bought in a phantom. I think he's uh, realized what just happened while he's been that yeah, menacing. Yeah, he's not going to touch this sheriff for another couple of days, I think, after that one. Yeah, that's for sure. He does have an alarm bot to secure him a little bit of uh, distraction. Let's see if it works out. He's aware that there could be more than one person here. Doomsday with a beautiful shot on the hacker. The blind side needs to get rid of that. But they don't actually push in. They're actually going away from here. He's holding on to the fault line. No idea where he wants to drop it. And look at Sami. How is this man allowed to just crawl in like this? Blackhawk? Yeah, of course he's going to be taken out here. They're moving towards the A side though. Here goes the blind to try and clear down A shot cubby. The A side is completely empty. And um, with that, we've got the side of Exili. Blind goes down just about in time. God Vexy could have actually stopped it. But hey, it's not gonna happen. Save the guns. what you can because yeah this was a bonus round but a very scrappy bonus general and somehow sami still just walking around the map as he owns the place he's the tax collector that you really don't want to see into your house wimp is gonna be saving up this operator and there's no way he's crossing that uh alarm bot kept over there the trademark he's gonna hold down the angle Nobody's going to be challenging him. An operator for a better round. 2-1 to one now. Exili win their buy down and they move on forward. Silver lining of the situation is Blackhawk's going to be able to take that operator and get himself a full shield if he wants to. But then again, yeah, the buys are not looking that good for them whatsoever. They're going to be opting to go in for a save. Wimp is going to be the one to play with the operator instead of Blackhawk, okay? Yeah, because he didn't receive any money, right? So it makes sense for him to carry it along with him because he also has armor to work around. Oh, Blackhawk, okay. Little too aggressive, but he will somehow make it back. Wimp will get a kill. That's good. But Zolo's found success on the other side of the map. Hacker going to be the victim of yet another first blood. As the seaside is being taken over, ladies and gentlemen, it is Exili's for the playing. And SMX here, uh, there's no way he's escaping. Wimps crosshair of four versus three. And Blackhawk. I mean, oh man. Doomsday should have hit that shot. He knows that he can spam that wall. And now he's given out the call to his teammates that he could be towards the spawn area. Godvex, he blows him straight out of the water. 
a beautiful sheriff shot and now black hawk has a little bit of room to work with he knows once towards see long he marks it out as well the blind should come in from zolo there it is they go out for the peak he gets it two versus three still doable got vexy though looking insanely strong at the moment playing around with fate itself right now zolo has got an advantage and he's playing to work with it but not for too long the will the spike the get defused though Oh, it's gonna be a little too close for comfort. Yeah, I think he's got, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah, he's got about a second and a half comfortably defused. And a round that I honestly believe Exili should have won without any kind of notoriety. They just gave it away. SMX stuck in that corner was the one problem of the entire round. He got killed. Wimp connected that shot to perfection. And of course, this is why they handed him the operator. Exactly what he needed to do to try and bring in the favor on their side and he was just able to deliver perfectly he was able to reconcile for what he did in the previous round with the sheriff so that's good blackhawk though now the operator's in his hands how does he want to play it how does he want to bring in proper usage of this one sniper rifle because currently no one's going towards the side of c just yet it's i okay swing alone does never help and even if you do swing it, you gotta know that you just have to give up the angle later. Well, he does have a trade in the form of Wimp coming in towards Garage. Zolo, oh, the timing. Kind of sneaky, and Godvexy snuck into this corner. We might expect this, and Godvexy is now stuck. He might line both of them up, but he gets the one at least. And that's his job done. Three versus three, no Ultimus to work with in terms of a retake. How are you gonna do this, Ogless 5? I think they're gonna wait. Oh, no. SMX. Kill. You know that heaven is open. You still try to run away. And now, because of that, look at the ultimate coming in. That one kill, a free kill, awards them this round at most, it seems. Doomsday is gonna be stuck under heaven. He tries to move out for a kill, but Wimp takes care of him. Zami will be safe, but there's no way he's gonna be stopping this defuse from happening. Wimp is just trying to hold them on for as long as possible. Bullets through the smoke. Doesn't even matter. It's over. Four and one and Wimp with another 3k. You really never want to be in situations like this. And sadly, I, I believe that there's a massive gap in the communication. SMX just started running back from... The inside of the site over onto A main while he knows that window is open. These are the type of mistakes you don't expect you from play, experienced players play. like these. But that's gonna Blackhawk. cost you rounds. Blackhawk's immediately gone on 25 HP oh. and Doomsday! Oh, that flick. That would have hurt. Doomsday clears up the seaside with just one sexy flick. And now we've got Exili on the advantage his position. Space was with another. Here's Godvexy trying to get some kills. Oh! Sai! You saw him teleport away, but that doesn't mean you can walk out with your metallic arms and no weapons between them. Doomsday with another beautiful kill and what a round from Exili. Back to the perfect round for them. But then again, you have to say that. What really went wrong over on the garage? Wasn't Hacker sitting behind the wooden box? And SMX yeah. just walked in and killed the person holding from garage window. Yep. What? It's a uh, part and parcel of what we call textbook Valorant. I call it Hakuna Matata. I mean, I wouldn't say it's no worries. I would definitely say it's a worry for somebody to let in like that and clear out your defensive strategies like it's nothing. Doomsday looking for another one of those maneuvers towards C. Right, pop him through the smoke. If he spams towards that left side wall, he's gonna get a free kill. Blackhawk though dashes out, has support, gets a kill, gets back. That's a 3v5 now. They don't need to push anymore to any other avenue. They just gotta wait. SMX is detected. SMX is probably killed. Whoa! Okay. 
27 HP. No way Sai is gonna be messing that up. And with that, he's found a third. Doomsday walking in silently towards the seaside like he can sneak in again. Not gonna happen. There is the fifth round for the side of Hogless 5. The one thing I was confused about though, why was Doomsday sent alone towards the seaside to lurk as a jet while the rest of the team are actually taking fights? Interesting strategies. Very interesting. You have to question some of the strategies coming out from XZD. This doesn't feel like them at all. The fact that they're playing so discombobulated is unsettling. Are you joking? Come on. I told you, it's very unsettling how discombobulated they're playing. Oh, oh my god, Blackhawk. This guy is just running circles around them right now. That Aftershock is gonna not even let them peek. God Vexy takes out Space Swiss. The A site is not even being accessed. They're all being stopped right towards the archway. This is a graveyard right here. You can see the number of bodies that have dropped. There's no way they're winning this. There's no way they're even competing this. Unless, of course, Sai and God Vexy pop out and give themselves up for free. But Blackhawk is there to secure themselves. And a 4k for him is equal to a 6th round for the side of Oculus 5. They're slowly but surely taking control of Haven as well. The same way they got a scent. They are dominating on the defense as well. They don't care what side they're playing on. Their aggressive strategy is being contemplated across every single side of the map. They're aggressive on C at times. They're aggressive towards mid at times. And aggressive towards A at times. It's, it, it's almost like... Sai and Blackhawk are a duo that's just stuck together with Fevi Quick and they're traveling everywhere. Fevi Quick got that. I mean, that's exactly what it looks like. Finally, Blackhawk put, put a stop to. And Wimp will immediately trade that out. This is not how it's supposed to go. You cannot let those trades come in that quick. But it doesn't matter because Exili have found a way to try and open up the A site. Unnecessary pushes are granting them an avenue to work with. Wimp. This is his game. He throws in the flash. He needs to check towards the right side. Moves out of the open. Wimp, you gotta check your corners, my friend. And with that, it's Hacker. And in a 1v4, possibly maybe one free kill. An exit frag on to Zolo if he chooses to come. To oh, that should have been hurt. Yep, Zolo's definitely gonna be knowing his position. He's stuck in this little corner. They are hounding him like a bunch of wild animals. Let's see if they can find this free kill on the space whiz. He's holding it on the corner, takes a swing and a beautiful shot on towards the face of Hacker. That's gonna be a good crosshair placement play for him. Six and three, and finally we see a second win coming on down through from the members of Exili. But that's the thing, for how long will they last? They're on the attacking side, the much more stronger side for this map in particular and you know for a fact that breach on the side of defense is very weak in comparison to the side of attack so your opponents are on their weaker side and as soon as they go over to the attack all hell will start to break loose let's find out if it happens again we've got the deadly duo or the trio i should say both the initiators supporting the jet Oh, that bullet was a little too close to his head. Oh boy, here we go. Blackhawk should probably just dash out there, but he's slowly moving in. Face with takes him out. There's Sami with another Blackhawk while he's got one kill. He's looking for more. There's a lot of chaos towards this AMA inside. There's a tag that should have come in, but they're already moving in towards the B side. Hacker needs to stop this from happening. He needs to move out from that smoke and get this free kill. He should be getting one, but he's holding on for his teammates to come in. That might just be the wiser choice, but that does not give him any amount of information whatsoever. He expects one to be on the top of boxes. Maybe told it to his teammate. Blackhawk was looking there, but SMX was right above. Just right below. Forgive me, his crosshair placement. And that is number four for Exili. They've made their way back, but how much further can they go? This is a better first half than the first game that they played. But they've got a lot more to do. But thankfully, to their advantage, They've got their opponents on an eco. They're doing what they can to try and bring themselves back into this matchup. And 
with that, it's a 6-4 and four score line. It's not looking that good for the side of Orgos 5. They're making a lot of rookie mistakes, and these rookie mistakes are just building up more and more and more. And at one point, it may just tip over and overflow onto the other side because this eco round has the opportunities of them being able to survive it and maybe go in for a couple of frags of their own. Maybe this is going to be a kill. Sai, you got to hit that shot and it's going to be a fight too. SMX! And he what are survived. you looking at, buddy? Oh my oh, god. Poor old Game. hacker dies. He still survives. Zolo gets Sai. And that's a little bit of con damage control being done. But here comes Blackhawk. And there's Blackhawk who's damaged. Doomsday, he gets it to the box and a thrifty. Man, this was supposed to be their round. So this was basically a free round for them. They went in towards the seaside. They took fights. I, I don't know what the hell happened there. How did SMX not turn around? How did Space Wiz not hit that shot? I don't think there were comms. I don't think there was a comm about that. He just wimp walks out. He took a fight. No, it's not even about a comm, man. You can see and hear bullets being fired, right? And you can see on the map. Space Wiz was shooting at Wimp. And SMX just walks and he was right in between both of their crosshairs. And SMX did not even turn around. Even after Space Wiz had play, died. He was just running in the 90s. It can happen. But Blackhawk, I don't think he's going to take that risk at all. I'm not gonna go in for that respin. He's gonna take it slow, he's gonna take it steady. And with this tag, maybe it's gonna be a hold, SMX. He does get an unfortunate kill on towards the face of Blackhawk. A fortunate one for their side. And Space Wiz is gonna be able to find an immediate refrag. And now Sai, he's in a pretty tough situation of his own. Not really gonna be able to do out much. Just get that one kill, but immediately gets fragged out by the two others. Last player remaining will be Wimp. And Wimp. Yeah. He's just gonna see what he can find. One versus three, there's of course, there's not much that he can do. We've got seven and five here. A much better score line than the nine and three. And even though the side of Exili are on the lower end of it, I still believe that they've got a little bit more in their fuel tank to try and push this over the finish line. Maybe have us see the map of Bind come in. I'm a little worried on the oversight of the side though, because like you said, the breach is more potent on the attack of Haven than it is on the defense, right? And that's exactly why they're going to the one site where Sai can cause the most damage, and that is the C side. His fault line clears up a multitude of angles towards the back of site and towards the close right of garage. At the same time, he can even throw in his aftershock towards the metal platform here they go blackhawk dashes straight in that's a freaking no sami what? flicks onto his head i don't know how the hell that connected but it did hacker just triple shots zolo and he's what? what the hell okay no come on no, no way no, no, no six no, no, no. man for the side of orgus five and then a classic to finish everything off another question why did sami buy a ghost as a chamber yeah exactly why did he have a ghost? He has his own custom designed and made for just him Sheriff, which is a faster pullout. And it gives him so much more value in terms of damage as well. 55 to the body and a one shot to the head. Why would you go for a ghost? It just limits your possibility so much more. If your one major thing is your aim, then Chamber is the guy who is going to be speaking your name. Well, I just question some of the decisions. And again, this is an eco round. He could have easily just picked up a couple of more bullets and just played around it. I feel as though Sami's not comfortable on the Chamber. He just picked it to give it a try. And this, that, that's just a fair... If if that is the case, it's a horrible time to do it. It's a horrible time to do it. It does feel because... like it, doesn't it? Because as a chamber, you have so much power on these eco rounds. You can easily shift to the momentum of an eco round with a snap of your finger. We saw that yesterday just from Optic, yay. 
We saw the dominant presence a chamber can have. This is why chamber is such a strong and potent character. Yeah, and it was on this map, wasn't it? Yeah, it exactly. It was on this map. map. Yeah, he has a lot more potential, but unfortunately, Sami is more suited to the jet, it seems. And Doomsday, come on. His reaction time was just far too off the mark. And with that, while Zolo will have a trade come in, Sai is causing damage and blindness with his utility, as well as clearing corners. Breach. Oh, he, wait, what? what? Did SMX not see? What? And where is Zolo teleporting? What the hell is happening? Confused, Unga Bunga. Confused, Unga Bunga, indeed. You have your interesting, and I have my confused. I wouldn't even call this interesting anymore. I'd say this is blatant craziness. Exactly. Zolo use my teleporting out of the open. SMX walking into that aftershock when he clearly saw his teammate run away from it. Number one. Number two, him himself knowing that it's there, still getting killed by it. Blackhawk needs to check. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. What? I, I was gonna cry. I swear to God. I, I kid you not. I was about to cry for a second. But Doomsday seems to be making up for those tears. He gets... Okay! Exili somehow have taken over the recklessness of Oculus 5. Oculus 5 are being a little too outright blatantly confident in that round and they've been punished. A little bit more of a tactical approach would have helped them. Maybe go with a drone at least you know size utility as the breach but no blackhawk rushed straight in through a smoke and that cost him and well the rest of the team followed yeah i have witnessed a lot of things in this entire best history. and i don't know if i like it or not hello blackhawk SMX? Uh, I'm, I'm, okay, uh, no, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> am I actually seeing things or am I actually seeing things? Just got another kill for himself, so I guess you're gonna be happy about that. Get hackers though. So did use the kill to lock down to get them the present. They have control and Blackhawks just flying oh, around. The Tommy. Entire Tommy missed out on two bullets. Blackhawks just towing with his food. He's running back. He's running left. He's running right. God, Vexy comes in to save the day at the very end. Sami's not gonna be able to find the two frags because Blackhawk was just flying around like an absolute madman. No one's gonna be able to hit that shot every single time. And Sami's just not having a good day either. And another one of the main problems with two to force is that if you are not used to that operator, it will be the bane of your existence. When I first played Chamber, I honestly couldn't use the operator for a single second because of how weird it felt. And I think that Sami's also having the same problem because if, if this is his first time playing the agent, Here. this could be an issue. Doomsday wastes all of his knives and now Blackhawk runs in. Space Whisk comes in from Garage to try and do some sort of damage control. And Exili are just capitalizing upon yet again a blind nomadic push on the side of Oculus 5. I didn't understand that both these teams are just doing plays that I am just having to see go over my head. Wimp on a good recon mission is watching on the map while all of his players drop down dead. Got one kill onto Zolo probably. Oh, Tisami. Don't maybe not fire at him and look towards mid. Goes in. Now he's got worries. And one of them was gonna be taking him down. Doomsday gets the kill. 11 and 7. Match is not over yet while it does seem like of it in a much, much more intensive manner. You know what I question in this situation? Wim, what was going on through his head during the time of that clutch? Because the thought process was there, but he nearly could have gone on that clutch, but at the same time, it's a one versus four, so I'm not going to say 
what he could have done better. We are at, we are the spectators, so we are in a much more of a different boat. We know exactly where the opponents are, like, and he doesn't. But and these rounds are getting closer and closer. Get out of my way. To be Eleven and eight, and slowly they're starting to drop in like flies. Blackhawk. Is what I'm gonna say. Zolo, he's gonna be saying yeah as well. Takes one and runs back immediately. That smoke covers up for him. And throws in another for safety measures, and now it's a 2v3. There goes the ultimate. They should know he is towards long on the left side. Zolo, he needs to win that fight on with a hacker. No, he doesn't. This might just be it. Match point just about a couple of seconds away here. Spaceways. He's got the ultimate. And now... He is going in for the clutch. 2v1. Basically a 3v1 given that, yep, it is a 3v1. With that turret, it's always an extra man that Hacker provides. Match point. I explain something to me though. Aggressive. We just saw Spaceways fire out a couple of bullets from one Vandal. He reloads it. It gets reloaded to 25 and then he picks up the other one. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I think he likes, I, I mean, not to say anything, but I think he likes the Prime Vandal more, clearly. Prime Vandal is better. Imagine using the Glitch Pulse. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stick with Sentinels of Light, man. Best weapon, best skin in the game. Okay, never mind, Doctor. Wait! I am no one oh, for his foot! On. No one saw his foot! You cannot tell yes, me no one saw not. his foot! Yeah, they did. I know they did. We all know that smoke was not covering him completely. This That's is... a one way. Come on. This game is turning out to be such a weird one. Wimp is to get that kill. He will not. God Vexy will turn him back. Hackers also they found Pace was trying to push in. And here's Sami. Being sneaky as ever, just following the trail of his enemies. Zolo goes in, gets a blind one, looks for the second. It doesn't matter, Godvex, he's got a bit of positioning. Expects the backstab, but he gets in. What the hell was that from Godvexy? What the hell well, was timing. this game? Well, th this game was a lot of interesting things. This game was... Let's say a mixture of both of our sayings. Interesting. And a very confused Unga Bunga. No, this was an interestingly confused Unga Bunga. That's what this game <laughs> was. Oh my god. This, uh, as much as I would like to describe, analyze, read, or uh, whatever and, you know, synonyms you want to use, let's go to the match highlights as I talk about this. All the synonyms that you can use to try and break down what happened in this game, starting from this round right here, we let's just we okay. can't. We, the, the thing we, is, we, we we can't. I want to invite any of the other analysts in our country, even in analysts, Europe no, 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 no. and LA. I'm, just... I'm gonna I'm gonna invite I'm gonna invite anybody from the audience watching. If anybody found out what was happening in this game. I mean, the basic stuff, yes, we of course know what's happening. But then it was rounds like this, like this. Like this, what happened was one of the <laughs> highlights of the game, which, um, yeah. I think much that the game up. just, yeah, that this game, this one clip summed up the entirety of this game. No one really knew what was happening. It was just a pure on show of raw mechanical skills. Sometimes it was about the whiff. Sometimes it was just those misses coming into play. And in some rounds, it was strategic prowess being showcased by all the members of World Quest 5. It just was rough, to say the very least. And Exili, they're going to be out of the tournament, but I guess they went out in the most memorable way possible. Mm. Okay, if you put it that way, sure, I can put that in the light sense. This is the end of Exili's journey. Unfortunately, they came back after such a long time and they are going to be going out as well in, in a manner that I did, you know, I think that they would have not wanted. This has been quite a match, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
as much as I would say this was entertaining, let's go to the brackets. I think that's going to be more entertaining. Um, yeah, August 5, move on ahead. Clean slate. They're going to have to wait for either one of Reckoning or Enigma to fall and come down. And that is going to be a much more difficult scenario for August 5. Nothing close to what Exili gave them in terms of competition. And God Particles at the lower bracket as well will be waiting for either one of Team Snakes and True Rippers. The upcoming Ripper, matches, sorry. though... Yep, the upcoming matches, though, are going to be a lot more competitive. Reckoning versus Enigma. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the game of the two unbeaten teams of the tournament so far. Nobody has been able to beat them across the series. And that's probably going to be happening tomorrow. So hold on. Just sit tight one more day. And we've got probably the best game coming up so far in the gauntlet. Really excited for that one. And I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to catch it for you guys back at home. But for now, that's all that we have for you for today. It was a pretty action-packed day, I would say, when it comes down to yeah. all the different clips that we were able to get. And hey, we're going to be living all of those different moments on our Instagram, so make sure to follow us there, because as soon as we get a clip, we're going to be posting it there every single time. But as you're going to be checking out all the links on the description for our socials, make sure to check out our apparel partner, 656, and also Intel, because Intel delivers the best gaming value by delivering the best overall gaming experience. Make sure to follow the hashtag game with Intel to find out more about exactly what they're up to. and. At the end of the day, thank you all for stopping by and sticking by us for so long. The closing moments of the playoffs are coming on down through. We still have a plethora of matches to go, but slowly but surely, the first initial stages of the matches are already gone. So I'm a little bit lighthearted. I'm a little bit sad on that end, but we still got to keep the show rolling. But for tonight, we're going to be signing on off. It's going to be your boy, Aggressive with Universe, taking it off, and we're going to be seeing it tomorrow with a lot more action for the LGR Trigger TC Gauntlet Season 4, powered by Crucial, our gaming partners at Intel, and our parallel partners at 656. Good night, and happy gaming, everyone.